being able to make that time for her, she will multiply that. So if you're sowing into her, she will make your life 10 times better. Believe me, I know, good or bad. So neglecting her, she won't become everything uh, for the marriage, right? She won't because all of a sudden she's feeling some kind of way because she's like, look, I'm, I'm third now. I'm not number one. And women can feel that. And even for men, do, do you really want to be number three in your spouse life? If he says, I'm not good, one of the worst days of my life. Now, the reason I talked about age being 64 is because I feel like at his age, he's like, you know what? I'm willing to be vulnerable. vulnerable. He wants to be open. And I think that's when you lived life for a little while and you're like, you know what? I don't have time for pride. I don't have any time for ego. I'm not good. A lot of times we have people, they have these divorce parties and stuff like that. Like, I get it. I understand divorce parties. I get it. You're happy. It's over with. You know, you can live your life now. You can find out who you are as an individual. Yes, that that's good. But one thing I've learned about marriage too is pride and ego, it really doesn't have any room. We're going to address Judge Mathis and the separation uh, from his wife, Linda Yvette. But there are some things that I want men to know about this as well. Um, there are some takeaways from this that when I watch the video and you know, I hope everything worked out for Judge Mathis and, and his wife during the separation, because I've been through a separation. I understand what it looks like. I tried to reconcile with my ex-wife before we went through a divorce and come to realize that uh, it just didn't work. Like we tried to make our marriage work and uh, it didn't. And so here's some things I want to discuss. Uh, Judge Mathis and wife Linda Yvette are parting ways after 39 years of marriage. I was just doing some research on this before I jumped on to make sure that everything that I discussed was accurate. If you have any questions, feel free to comment below. She, Linda, is filing. Uh, she is citing for irreconcilable differences. That's a big one with most divorces now. A lot of them are irreconcilable differences. He's 64 and she's 61. Now, there are some things that I want to discuss, too, about age, because I think sometimes we don't think about the age factor when it plays uh, into marriage. Because in today's culture that we live in, everyone is all about, you know, me, me, me. And, and I get it. Yes, there should be some time that you spend to yourself. At the same time, though, if you desire marriage, and you plan on doing this for the long haul, like you have to put in the necessary work. One thing that I've learned over time is, are you a content creator, YouTuber? Maybe you've interviewed someone on your video podcast and they said something that was really, really good. Or maybe you said something that was really, really good. Well, enter Opus Clips. This is the platform that I use when I want to share 30 to 60 second video clips that I can share with the whole world. I mean, you can share those clips on TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, uh, Instagram Reels, like these 30 to 60 second clips that Opus Clips can give to you with the click of a mouse. All you have to do is upload the recording and boom, Opus Clips within maybe 10 minutes will give you 15 to 25 different clips with description on the side of the video. And it also gives you like a title and it gives you a rating and let you know how powerful that clip can be used on social media from a rating of 99 all the way down to maybe 60. This is a phenomenal platform that has took my social media marketing to another level. If you want to level up your social media game, Go in the description below right now and get the link for Opus Clips. This will not disappoint you. I hope that you're the one And that you are the prototype Wedding day isn't the same person who they are today. They change, so you have to stay in tune so when i'm watching this clip from 
Judge Mathis, they asked him, you know, how was he doing? And I'm pretty sure you've seen the clip. He says, I'm not good. One of the worst days of my life. Now, the reason I talked about age being 64 is because I feel like at his age, he's like, you know what? I'm willing to be vulnerable. He wants to be vulnerable. He wants to be open. And I think that's when you lived life for a little while. <laughs> and you're like, you know what? I don't have time for pride. I don't have any time for ego. I'm not good. A lot of times we have people, they have these divorce parties and stuff like that. Like, I get it. I understand divorce parties. I get it. You're happy. It's over with. You know, you can live your life now. You can find out who you are as an individual. Yes, that that's good. But one thing I've learned about marriage, too, is pride and ego. It really doesn't have any room. I know I've struggled with that in my marriage, having pride and, and, and ego like that stuff can destroy a marriage. And when you put that aside, I believe your spouse is able to see a different side of you, a, a, a vulnerable side that they're willing to even work with you, regardless of what you're going through, depending on who you are married to. Then it, then they asked him, how are you holding up with the separation? He says, I'm not doing well. And then he says, I will be an example to other men, a cautionary tale. So in other words, Judge Mathis is saying, look, don't make the same mistakes I made. I, I want to talk about some of the things that he discussed as well. He said, thank you for everyone who's joining us right now. He said, number one, don't neglect your wife. I know that sounds simple, but he says, I've been flying out for 25 years. My wife has been third. So in other words, she wasn't the priority. Single men, especially if you desire to marry, shoot, you can be married. Make sure your wife is a priority. After God, make sure that she's the priority. And I'll explain some of that why. He said number one was serving his community. Number two was taping his show. And number three was having fun with my friends. Friends are important, but your friends don't come before your spouse. So here's number two, never be too busy and never have too much fun beyond your wife. That's something else he said. Never be too busy or never have too much fun beyond your wife. Number three, he said he will make her a priority, but he's still on the road doing the same thing. I thought that was interesting. I want to talk about that as well. He says, I want my wife back, but I have to show her that. So with him saying those things, I want to jump into some of uh, the notes that I've taken. Of course, after God, your wife come first. I talked about that before. And he said his wife came third. Now, this is some stuff that the old school guys used to tell us growing up. And, you know, now that I'm older, I live a little life. I, I understand now. A wife will multiply whatever you give her, good or bad. That's something that they used to always tell us growing up as youngsters. A wife will multiply whatever you give her, good or bad. So if you're not pouring into her, if you're not giving her the things that she desires, and we talk about love languages and all those different things, what is her love language? What makes her feel love, especially if it's quality time? If it's quality time, you have to make sure that you are giving her that. She might want to just chill out and watch movies with you. She might just want to have a conversation. She might just want to go and you know, go to a coffee shop or something. Or maybe she'd like to go out to dinner, just some simple things. Maybe she's adventurous. Maybe she wanted to go uh, zip lining. Who knows? But being able to make that time for her, she will multiply that. So if you're sewing into her, she will make your life 10 times better. Believe me, I know, good or bad. So neglecting her, she won't become everything uh, for the marriage, right? She won't because all of a sudden she's feeling some kind of way because she's like, look, I'm, I'm third now. I'm not number one. And women can feel that. And even for men, do, do you really want to be number three in your spouse life? Now, prioritizing, especially when it comes to God. I do believe that God should be first, that you get in that quality time with him on an individual basis, because 
as a believer, I believe through his word, you become better. You become a better spouse. You become a better husband, a better wife. Date nights should be prioritized. And here's another one. Enter her world. What is it that she like? Because if you don't know what she like, I don't know how you're going to be able to help her and how you're going to be able to give her that quality time. When you get into her world, she's going to feel that love. You know, like I said before, whether it, whatever her love language is, especially if it is uh, time. When you get into her world, like my wife, she loves plants. Love plants. So whenever I get a chance to go to Home Depot and I'll get her a little plant, some plant that she might like or whatever, or some plant that she says she wanted, I'll go make sure that I get that for her. And making sure that she have that time to repot her plants and stuff like that, because, you know, she like to go out in the garage and do those kind of things. She might need me to help her. Hey, can you do this with me? OK, cool. You know, you need me to help you with the plants. I'll do it. But that's showing her that she's a priority. For men, number two. Are you putting your career, hobbies or money before her? Now, this can be challenging for men because sometimes men, we get caught up in our career, our hobbies, uh, making money, you know, and I get it. Those things are necessary. We got it. We got to get paid. Got to pay the bills. Totally understand that. But if she's not feeling if she's not being that priority, when you put that career, it doesn't matter how much money you make. If you look at Judge Mathis, I mean, all the money he has and and she still filed for separation. So sometimes it's not so much about always having to make that money. It's just making sure that you be, especially when both of you are working, right? Both of you are working because sometimes she might need, well, a lot of times, if you have small kids, she need help around the house. I'm not saying that this was Judge Math Mathis situation, but I'm just saying me and you, I'm just talking to everyday people. If you have kids, especially small kids, she needs help around the house. That's going to help her feel love too. If you know how to cook, go ahead and cook. If you if you clean up, I mean, it's like even with my wife and I, when we working around the house and we both working jobs and it's just like, when I get off work, it's like, do we need to wash clothes? Do we need to mop floors? Whatever. My wife might have doctor's appointments for the kids. We got a lot of different things going on at one time. Uh, dentist appointments, doctor's appointments. And we have to be in sync. We have to be in sync in order to pull this off successfully to make sure that this work. And that becomes a part of the whole family unit where she feels like you're a part of the family. You're actually interacting. It's not like you just bring home a check because a lot of women, especially for those who work in two income households, she's, she's stuck with most of the responsibilities. She's stuck with helping with the kids, cooking, cleaning. Uh, and sometimes there might be some men who are a little more uh, interactive. They might be supportive of the kids and stuff like that, but those things make her feel loved. So you have to make sure that you're helping out around the house as well. Hobbies, you like to play golf, like to play video games, all those things. <clears throat> Nobody's trying to take your life away from you. But at the same time, take care of home first. You take care of home first. You take, remember when you were growing up and I know for in our household, like we couldn't do the things that we needed to do. I mean, we couldn't have fun, go outside and play with our friends and stuff like that until all our, everything in the house was done. It, similar, like in adulthood, right? You go home, make sure everything is done. Make sure the kids are good. Make sure your wife is good. And then, you know, you take your time to if you want to go play your little video games or if you want to go golf on the weekends or whatever it is that you like to do. You can you can set uh, time aside for that, but you want to make sure that she's good at home, because, again, when she's good at home. Everything else flows perfectly. Number three, here's the one that got me. When Judge Mathis said. <clears throat> he said, uh. He will make her a priority, but he said he want to make her a priority, but he's still on the road and <laughs> doing the same thing. I want to say 
old habits die hard. Now, before he was just saying these things about what he needs to do to get his wife back. And he's like, oh, here I am again on the road doing the same thing that I'm in this situation now. That put me in a situation. So especially for men, I get it. If you've been used to things just going your way or you felt like, you know, uh, you work, you just come home, like I said before. And you just kind of do your your thing or whatever, and your wife is frustrated. You have to make the necessary changes. And old habits, I get it. They die hard. You like, I'm used to just chilling. I'm used to just kicking it. I don't I don't care about her nagging or whatever. I just want to go home and just do what I do. In order for things to be better, you have to create change. You can't keep doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. Especially if you and your spouse had the conversation about what needs to be done around the house, how she needs your help, how she needs your attention. So you have to make the necessary changes after having the conversation. So those were just some of the takeaways that I, I got from this, from seeing what uh, Judge Mathis and his, his, his wife is going through with this separation. Uh, and we only have so much information on this right now, but hopefully everything will work out for them. There is a couple of things about marriage I want to discuss, uh, especially uh, statistic wise. Right. I want to talk about some of this. I was doing some research on Forbes and according to Forbes magazine, as, as I was looking at it online, 31 percent of couples who ended their marriage reporting incompatibility was the reason. Incompatibility. I find that interesting. 31%. So a lot of times I think that incompatibility comes in the dating phases. I think when you take the time to talk about what you like, dislikes, non-negotiables, boundaries, all these different things, and not thinking that you can change someone. Because I think that's where a lot of people struggle with struggle in relationships, is they feel like they can change someone. They, you know. They've been doing the same thing for 20, 30 years. And here you come thinking that you can change this person just because you cute or you handsome or you tall or you got some money. And it's, there's there's more to it. 31 percent of couples reporting incompatibility was the reason for their marriage ending. Forty three percent of marriages end in divorce. <clears throat> 60% of second marriages end divorce, 73% of third marriages end in divorce. So as you can see, the stats, they continue to get higher and higher when the more you marry. I believe the reason why second marriage is the number to get higher and third marriages is because you never really learn anything the first time. You never really learn anything from the second time. And a lot of times you are blaming the person you're with, you're thinking that if I just find the right person, when you have to become the right person, because you can get married four or five times thinking you're going to find the right person, but you keep doing the same things that get you in these situations. That's why I was saying before, old habits die hard. The average length of a marriage prior to divorce is eight years. People talk about that seven year itch and stuff like that. So maybe I need to do a video on that. If you want to know, like, why is seven, year number seven and eight, why are they so rough? Maybe that's something that we can discuss. So if that's something that you want to hear, uh, comment below. I'll make sure that I can get that video out. 32% of men and 33% of women believe they personally should have made more of an effort to prevent the divorce. I found that interesting. 32% of men and 33% of women. So when people do divorce, they're thinking, looking back, yeah, I could have possibly made some changes. There are some things that I could have done to prevent the divorce. Rather, if you maybe you didn't go to therapy, maybe you were too emotional. And every time you got into an argument, you're leaving. Like you're always running away from situations. Who knows? It could be a plethora of things. But those, those numbers show that people, if they were willing to do the work, maybe the marriages would have stayed. This is Sean Heineman at scarytoremarried.com. 
go to the website, go visit. We have a bunch of great products that we just released from the Love Fearlessly line at scarytoremarried.com. We have merch there. Uh, we have the biblical affirmation cards. We have date night cards. We did a video on that as well. You have to choose that person every day. You have to think of ways to put a smile on your spouse's face. And it could be something small. It doesn't have to be anything big. You, maybe you was at the gas station pumping gas. And maybe it could be something as simple as buying her favorite candy bar. I don't know. Maybe she likes a certain kind of candy or just thinking of that person, just the little small things. My wife know I like room temperature water. So when I come home from work and she's making dinner, she has for me on the counter what room temperature water. So for me, that shows that she's, she's caring that she's thinking of me. Um, when I get off work, <clears throat> I go make sure that her gas tank is full. Let me go and fill up her gas tank. Let me make sure that she's good so she doesn't have to get any gas. These different things, just little small things that can help make you fuel your mirrors to make them feel like they are a priority. You just have to be willing to do the work. I think the problem with a lot of relationships today is people don't want to do the work. My mentor told me one time, he said, Sean, great marriages aren't found. They are built. And I will, I will say that until the end of time. A lot of times people want ready-made marriages. You know, it's just like food already packaged there. All you got to do is just throw it on, on the stove or in the oven or whatever. It's like, no, you got a marriage. It's like, if you want this good meal, you have to make everything from scratch. Everything. That's the, the chicken. That's the, the, the vegetables. That's everything everything from scratch because when you do that the meal just tastes that much better man it isn't just processed you know just quick this quick meal and people want those quick relationships they want everyone done for them so life can be easier for you because a lot of times people think like if you just do what i need you to do or, you know, I just want to be, I want you to be the perfect person for me. So I don't have to do anything. So I don't have to do any work. Just do everything I say. And then that way, my life can be easy. But that's not how marriage works. That's not how relationships work. You are two totally different people raised in two different households. And there's going to be some clashing. There's, there, there will be some clashing going on in the household. It, it will. It's just like that. And. I was I was saying on social media today that marriage is a, a breeding ground for development and personal growth. Like marriage helps you become better if you're willing to accept the process. I think a lot of people don't like to accept the process. A lot of people take me as I am. I'm not trying to change. Nobody's going to change me. Either take it or leave it. And unfortunately, a lot of times, People is like, oh, well, I can't change him or her. I'm out. Th the thing is to love that person for who they are and let them become the person who they want to become, not who you think that they should become. I think that's the biggest thing. And can you love them for their own individuality instead of making a carbon copy of you? Because... If you try to make them just like you, one day you're going to end up resenting that person. Believe me, you're going to you're going to wish that they had their own individuality. You're going to wish that because it's like there's only one you. You know, you know when people say you get mad when I pull a you on you, that whole thing. You want that person to be their own person. They're, they're an extra set of eyes that help you see different. You know, marry someone who can see your blind spots who can kind of help you see through some things. Like we should be helping each other become better, not being uh, each other's enemies.